Hi everybody, this is Bob with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at treating a flamenco guitar with EQ and compression. And then I have some percussion tracks that we'll mix in as well. So let's get started. So what I have here is a Logic session sent to me by one of my subscribers, Marco. Now he says he struggles a bit with getting a nice sound out of his nylon guitar. He also mentioned that there's a lot of dynamic range in this guitar track, and he would like to see how I would deal with that in terms of EQ and compression. So I'll play the track as sent to me, but one disclaimer. He had a couple of plugins that I do not have. A reverb plugin bust out on a couple of the tracks, so I just added Logic Space Designer with a medium room setting as a replacement. Also, he had Ozone 5 on the stereo out. I'm not really sure how he was using that. So I, I just don't have anything on the stereo bus for now. So this may sound a little bit different than his original, but it'll be fine for the purpose of this video. I'm going to work in this middle section right here on this guitar track. And you can see it's the most dynamic part of the song. So we're going to focus on this uh, problem area. So with all the tracks on, let's take a listen here. You can see it's pretty dynamic. Um, this is the uh, strongest part right here, and we're just going to focus right for now on uh, these couple of hits here. So we'll EQ and compress it based on this area here, and then it should be fine for the rest of the song. So we'll uh, solo up this guitar track in question. Now, flamenco guitar is strung with nylon strings, and in its design characteristic, the guitar um, tends to be more responsive with less sustain than a typical classic guitar. The sound is often percussive, um, maybe a little punchy, and it tends to be brighter than other acoustic guitars. So we may treat this different than we do other acoustics. So let's, uh, let's start with EQ. Now I'm often asked, um, do I EQ before I compress or the other way around? And, and actually sometimes it could be either or it could be both. So I may EQ and then whatever compressor I'm adding, it may add some artifacts that I don't like or some, you know, offending frequencies. So um, I may put an EQ before the compressor and then again after the compressor. So here's the, uh, here's the EQ settings that we have. And it looks like he's done something very similar to what I would do. He, he pulled out the low end with a high pass filter. Uh, he's pulled out some 140 and 240 he boosted looks like everything above about 2000 in here so let's turn the analyzer on and let's take a listen to this in solo yeah so um so that that looks pretty good um he, he i normally look for something a little honky around 500 um and it looks like it looks like he boosted a bunch of 510 here but then he turned it off so let me turn it on and uh let me see what's going on there yeah that's that's pretty honky there around 640 so uh i'm going to pull that out as well and uh, i think he was on the right track here he was in the right area just looks like he didn't finish that so the rest of this looks good and it sounds good. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and look at the compressor now and see what we got, what we have going on here. Okay, right away we're clipping here. Um, 4.6. Yeah, we're clipping over 4 dB here. Just so y'all know, the, the signal chain here is from top to bottom on these plugins. So it hits EQ first, goes into the compression. One of the things I wanna make sure that the EQ is not raising the level of it and then overloading the compressor uh, on the input side. So let me just turn off the EQ and just make sure that that's not the problem. And sure enough, you can see here, 
So what we hit a negative two uh, or negative point two dB into this compressor now with the EQ turned off. I turn the EQ on and wow, it really overloads it. So I like the EQ settings. Everything's fine here. We just need to not overload the compressor on the input side, right? So it was four, a little over 4 dB. So we'll pull this down. This is the overall gain of the EQ. So we're going to pull this down 4 dB and uh, see how it hits the compressor now. That's fine. We're not overloading now. Yeah, and that's the reason why I chose this area to start right here because it's the it's loudest, most dynamic part. So we can fix those kind of problems there. So the track is really not clipping. It hits right at zero dB. Um, so a little gain staging might have been helpful here. Even though it's not clipping, it's going to be real easy to clip with plugins now because your um, anything unprocessed is already at zero dB right here or real close to it. So now let's look at the compressor settings. He's got the uh, Platinum Digital, which is really transparent. It doesn't, uh, it's real clean. It doesn't add any uh, artifacts or anything. So let's take a look at um, how we're compressing here. Uh, we have a two to one ratio, which I think we need to be more aggressive with that. So maybe a, we'll start with maybe four to one uh, ratio. I don't like using auto makeup gain. Um, so I'm gonna turn that off. And then we're going to make this gain up a um, couple of dB. I don't know how much we're going to compress, but um, I'll start with making up about 3 dB. So a fast attack um, is good because we're trying to knock these transients down. Uh, the release, um, we're going to make this a little bit slower here. So let's see how this sounds. And you can see we're clipping on the, on the out, but we'll, we'll fix that here in a minute. might want to go up to about uh, maybe four and a half or so. So I'm getting about three, three or so dB of gain reduction in the quieter parts. Let's see what happens back in that dynamic part again, the, the loudest part. Yeah, I'm hitting about maybe about seven dB in those peaks and that's fine. So that's a little more aggressive than we would normally be on an acoustic guitar. But, and then in the quieter parts, we're getting about, uh, you know, three or four. So I'm going to, I'm going to increase, increase this up about, uh, about four dB on the makeup gain. So notice here now we're not clipping on the output. Okay. So we, uh, we have enough gain reduction here. We're not going, we're not clipping coming in and we're not clipping going out. That's kind of important. That sounds great. I don't think I'd, uh, I'd do a whole lot more there. So, um, so the EQ looks good. The compression looks good. We're not clipping the plugins. So just as a protection, I'm going to add Logic stock um, limiter. And on a track like this, we don't really need to output more than about a negative one. That's fine. And, um, you know, we're not adding any gain or anything with this plugin. We're just protecting the stereo bus. So, um, so before we start mixing other stuff together, we're going to protect that uh, bus a little bit. So the next thing I would do with this uh, guitar, it was recorded in mono. I'm going to try to give this a little bit more stereo spread, and um, we're going to duplicate this track here. So this button here duplicates with uh, identical settings, so I have all the same plugins and everything. And we're just going to take this, um, I'm holding down the option key and just dragging this straight down so it makes a duplicate. So now if I play it, it's just louder. Right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull this out and, and grab the pan knobs here. So I'm pulling this out until the pan knob appears, and there it is. So I'm going to make this one go left, this one go right. Really haven't done anything, again, except make it louder. I'm going to take the second track over here, and then I'm just going to EQ it a little bit differently. So um, I'm going to put this back to zero so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'll tell you what, let me solo this up. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to thin it out a little bit here and maybe take this, uh, I'm just trying to EQ this track a little bit differently. So I pulled out some more of the low end, brightened it up a little bit, and I'm going to make this a little more mid-rangey here. So come over here, maybe around 1,500, widen this cue out a little bit. So I drastically EQ'd that differently, and now we're just going to kind of level match it here. So let's see what we have here. 13. Okay, that's good. And then we have left and right. So have this, this one here is EQ'd uh, much differently. So that gives it a little bit of a stereo spread, but it's not as much as this next technique here. So we're going to grab a delay plug-in, and we'll just use the tape delay here. We're going to delay this. Uh, we're not going to sync it here. We're going to delay this about, uh, I don't know, 60 uh, milliseconds. And we don't want any feedback, and we don't want any dry. We want this to be 100% wet. So now this duplicated track here that's panned to the right is just going to be delayed by 60 milliseconds. Let's take a listen. Okay, that's too much. So we're going to cut it in half. Let's make it 30. So that sounds pretty good. All right, now let's listen to it in the rest of the track. So we're going to select both of them and pull the volume up a little bit here. So let's try, let's try that. So that sounds pretty good. So let's take a look at these uh, MIDI tracks here. So these were MIDI uh, tracks that he bounced down to uh, audio files. So let's see what he's got going on here. There's no EQ or compression on any of this. So we'll see what we have going on. I'll turn the analyzer on here. What I don't like about this is all this low end stuff here. So if I use my low pass, and listen to that area below about 100. And I, I raised the volume up so I could hear it. Um, so if you have some, uh, some good speakers on, you're going to hear all this low end here. That's really not adding anything um, you know, to that track. So I really want to take that out. So one word of caution when you're using uh, MIDI or you're buying commercially produced loops, Make sure that you uh, that you check this low end. Almost everything needs to be high passed, you know. So you want to grab your high pass filter, and you really are interested in this uh, hundred and below. So we're just going to take this and roll it off. And the reason you want to do that is when you start adding multiple tracks of whatever, especially um, stuff you do with a microphone, you start adding a bunch of tracks and you're going to, uh, you're just going to multiply this by how many times you're doing it. So you've got 10 tracks, you multiply it 10 times, you got a lot of mud in your mix. So we're just going to roll this off here from about 150 on. So that's fine. So let's look at the next one here. Let's go down here. Okay, so he's already done that here. Uh, he's rolled all that off and he's EQ'd that, so. Check out this clav. Uh, let's put an EQ on there. This one's pretty clean. I don't see anything going on down there. So that's cool. Here's our bass track. Yeah, it looks good. He. Um, He's got a high pass filter on there. He's got a couple of notches here. He liked this mid range here and pulled out some of the highs. Okay, that's fine. 
Okay, one of the things, even if you're not done with this song and if you're still, um, still going to add some more tracks to it, one of the things uh, that I always do is add a mix bus compressor. It just kind of glues everything together. So I have a video on that, so check out mix bus compression. So I like Waves SSL bus compressor. So the default setting on this is fine. Um, I don't want a fast attack time on here because I don't want to... Um, I've already taken care of the transients here, so I want this to be uh, slow attack and uh, fast release. Other than that, the default is fine. I'll just bring the threshold down until I get a couple of dB of gain reduction. So I have a couple of dB of gain reduction, and then I made it up with the makeup gain. And that's all I need to do there, and it just kind of glues everything together. So one last thing we might want to do now is just increase the overall volume of this track. So let's go back to the limiter that we put on that stereo bus, and let's see if we can add some gain just to the overall mix. So let's see where we are right here. So we have plenty of room on, uh, plenty of headroom on these quieter parts. Let's try the louder part. So we have uh, negative 11 dB. We have a lot of headroom. So I'm just going to pull this up to maybe 5, 5 dB. And let's see what we got on the louder part there. Yeah, still have plenty of headroom. So not a problem there. Let's take another listen. I'm going to bring um, these two guitar parts here that we panned hard left and right. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so um, I have the original mix down here. I bounced it down into a WAV file so we can, um, we can hear kind of where we started. So let's take a listen. So in that first measure, I want you to hear one chord there right at the end that's, uh, that's real quiet. So check it out. So that was the original. Listen to that very last chord right there. It just kind of disappears. So that dun, 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 that last chord. Just listen to how it kind of fades out. So what we did by reducing the dynamic range of our two guitar, our stereo guitar track that we created, we also added makeup gain. So that brings the quieter parts up. So notice the difference on that last uh, chord that I'm talking about in the original and then in the uh, new mix we created. I'll play the original one more time. Okay, and then um, in our mix. See how that last chord there just kind of blends in with the rest of it? I'll play it one more time. So that's probably the most important thing we did by reducing the dynamic range. We added the makeup gain, which brings the quieter parts up. So, um, yeah, knocking off those peaks was important to, um, to eliminate clipping and not clip the uh, plug-ins. But also bringing up that quieter part um, really helped that guitar track. Then we spread it out um, by duplicating the track, putting the delay plug-in on the right side, and EQ'd it a little bit different to uh, give it a little stereo spread. Then we put the uh, SSL compressor as a glue uh, compressor to kind of bring all these tracks together, and then put the limiter on there to increase the overall volume. So one more time, the original. And then the new mix.
So there you go, a great way to add EQ and compression. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.